VIP Access access. with Aniko and Africa Loud. Welcome back to VIP Access. This is the illest music and culture podcast from Kenya and Africa. And here is home to all the best African stars. We are always talking about dope music, dope tours, dope creations. And I'm so excited because I'm going back to Rwanda. The last time I had an artist from Rwanda on this podcast, I think was 2021. That was Bruce Melody. Um, It's amazing. You guys know his songs. And it's so beautiful and amazing to go back to Rwanda and meet an artist who you need to know. I want to say this because we're starting 2024. This artist is one to watch. She's about to blow all over the continent, all over the world. I've been watching her from 2020 when she came out and she's been dropping dope EPs, dope singles. She's just too dope. You know, looking at her, sitting here next to her, I really feel the aura of celebrity, the aura of greatness. So it's such a pleasure for me to invite none other than Ariel Ways on VIP Access. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so What's much. What's up, girl? It's good. It's good. It's good. I'm blessed. Oh good, my God, good, that good. voice. Even your talking <laughs> voice is yeah. a beautiful voice. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You are so talented. Thank you. <laughs> How are you feeling? I thought you were gonna say my voice is a uh, no, no raspy I, and you know raspy. Raspy is sexy, <laughs> very sexy. I'm flattered. <laughs> only, only you know you're like uh, yeah. this is not how it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, like I get it every time. My voice and the way I sing. Yeah, it's two different things. But but this is a a bit raspier than usual because last night you had a club appearance. You're yeah, you're actually yeah, yeah. working. Yeah, 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 I was performing. Mm-hmm. Uh first time here in Kenya and it's been amazing. I just that's my voice. <laughs> Yeah. I think I think you know for for those who are listening I'm mm-hmm. always trying to paint a picture to to who um you know is at VIP access and why they're on my my podcast. So I've been watching you for some time. I've been listening to your music and I just I'm in awe of your greatness. And when I discovered you mm-hmm. um it, at first, you know, I already saw you know you had a lot of fans, you know, you had a lot of your videos doing yeah. very well on YouTube getting millions of of followers. So it was quite um it was quite something for me to see a young artist um, at the time when you came out in the industry. How mm. old were you? Were you 20? Uh, yeah, I was 20. Yeah, so. it was so amazing to see a 20-year-old, you know, doing her thing, mm. you know, putting out dope videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're getting good reception. And then you also started collaborating, you know, yes. with a lot of artists in Rwanda, mm-hmm. renowned producers in Rwanda. And you even crossed over to East Africa instead of working with the Moja Sounds. Yes. Um, Aerial Ways brought us a lot of hit records, including um, Venus with Umoja Sounds, yeah, um, yeah, Happy, yeah. Yes. Feel, it. Feel It. Oh my God, your songs. Then Shayo. <laughs> Shayo. And in Shayo, you're, you're giving me such a, a great, like, um, you know, mm-hmm. Afro pop song yeah, yeah. that is is like kind of made for the entire continent to dance. Yes, yes, yes. It's a Shayo has a funny story. Uh-huh. You you might listen to it and think maybe it's about Shayo and sipping on alcohol because <laughs> that's the chorus. It's more of that, but it has a story. It's about it's about a dilemma that I'm going through, mm. questioning who to choose in. My two lovers, mm. I, I fell in love with two people, mm. and one was okay with it, and another one was not. So yeah, that's the that's the whole story of the okay. song. Yeah, yeah. Who did you choose at the end? Mm. I didn't choose. <laughs> <laughs> I let them go. I let them go. I was like, why am I suffering? <laughs> Why am I suffering? I just let them go and it's it's stuff. good you you spoke about what Shayo is about because yes. I feel like you actually sing a lot about love. Yeah, I'm a lover girl. You know, yeah. there's actually an EP Love and Last. Love and Last. That was my first EP. And that yeah. cover. Is that Yo. Ariel and like kind of naked? Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, How did yeah. your parents take that? Um it wasn't good, you know, African parents. <laughs> <laughs> You're like I'm I can't, not. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even cap. gonna lie and be like <laughs> it was good. It was a challenge at first. It was a challenge, but I I feel like as an artist, we are human beings that are very complicated, and it's hard sometimes to get us. So it takes it takes time. It took time for them to understand, and um, 
cope with me and be with me, not throw stones at me like um, how it was in my country. Um, it was it was a very big challenge actually. Mm. Yeah, I faced I faced crazy crazy times there. Yeah, but I'm good. I'm good. We're here. I mm. mean. Take me back to that moment when you wanted to, you know, release yeah. and produce your first EP. What makes you think, like, I want to, you know, name it this. I yeah. want to be on the cover naked. I want to be an apologetic. I want to be bold. Yeah. It's such a, I think, a bold stance yes. for such a young artist, individual, mm -hmm. getting yeah. into the industry. Because I think for most people, no matter what industry you're in, yeah. people always say, think like, I don't want any kind of bad publicity in the beginning. Yeah, 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 I yeah. think people say, oh yeah, when you're big, you know, you can do anything. Like now Beyonce can do whatever she wants to do. Yeah, yeah. She'll have like a boring song, if at all, but she'll never have that. But then anyway, it'll be a hit song. Yes. But then you, how you came into the industry was, you know, quite expected, yeah. unexpected for for such an artist who's just starting. Yeah. Um, uh, why did you even take that route? <laughs> it wasn't polite, right? No. I, I came so... <laughs> it wasn't polite, but I loved it. I was like sitting here like, look at this chick. Yeah, so um, the thing is, uh, the whole idea of the EP, Love and Lust, it came from um, my love stories, real love stories. Mm -hmm. We're talking about love, we're talking about lust. These are serious things. These are things that are normal, you know? Yep. And people were not... I felt like it was something that was left out. That's why I was like, I want to face this. I know it's it's going to make maybe some people think uh, stuff's about me, mm -hmm. but that's my truth. And you know deep down that's that's the, that's your truth too because mm -hmm. we are human beings. Mm -hmm. we, have, we feel love, we feel lust. So why not talk about it as an artist? Mm. So um, that's also how I came up with the, the cover. Um, it was all about, because uh, I was being body shamed before. So um, I, I saw that as a sign of strength and um, freedom, embracing myself. Of course, of course. So yeah, that, that's why I did it. That's why I did it like that. And and, and, and that's, you know, you know kind of gave you some of, and a lot of your power yeah, back, yeah, right? Yeah, big time. I, I feel like... Um, I lost people. I might have lost maybe fans, but also I got more fans, mm. which uh, I count as a win. Uh, to me, what's important is me putting out my expressions, me telling you how I see the world, how I see love. You know, the, I have different perspectives and stuff. So, yeah. I would actually be curious to know mm -hmm. where do you get this kind of vast experience you know, in matters love, you know, and even last at such a young age because mm -hmm. sometimes you meet some people and you feel like they have kind of an older soul yeah. and you're one of those people because even when you sing, like the soulfulness, yeah. you know, comes out. Mm -hmm. I would never think in the beginning that you were that young. So when I saw your videos, I'm like, she looks 18. Have you been told you kind of have an old soul? I think you like the second person to tell me mm. that. My mom, my, mom, my mom always tells me that. Yeah, definitely. Like, yo. You are 18. What are you doing? <laughs> but like, there's been a. I, I didn't grow. I didn't grow up like the way I should. Like, I feel like I got uh, responsibilities on an early age, mm -hmm. which I love, which I really love, mm -hmm. and I'm really grateful that I had to go through that. Yeah. What What kind of responsibilities? I'm talking about um, myself. I'm talking about my family. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about. Um, my siblings, mm. you know. The Basically, lifestyle. growing up, you yeah. were just equipped to be responsible. Yes, yes, or to yes. Be a, to be responsible, mm -hmm. to be a young and responsible yeah. um, individual, for lack of a better word. Mm. So so where were you born? Where did you grow up? Um, I was born in the west part of Rwanda, and um, I studied there for five years. Mm -hmm. That's when I moved to Kigali. Okay. Like all the people want to get money. Mm. Like Kigali is the yeah. center of everything is going around there. Mm. So yeah, I I went to study music in uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. and I stayed there for three years. Where did you study music? Uh, Nyundo Music School. It's the only music school we have in Rwanda. Fantastic. Yeah. And was I, it good? Yeah, it was very good. Amazing. 
beautiful experience. Actually, I really, I really didn't see myself studying anything else. Uh, there's a there's a thing there when you when you're done with O level, mm-hmm. um, you go to A level. Mm-hmm. That's when you get to decide. Maybe I'm gonna do physics, maths, stuff like that. But the school was new, and I feel like it was like the second year mm-hmm. when I when I finished my O level. The school had uh, been alive for two years. Mm. So when I saw it, I was like, God, there's a reason why the music school is here now. There's a reason why I'm going there. Because I'm not going to go anywhere yes, else. I got lucky. I can count the times I prayed and was like, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I really feel lucky to be mm. to not be wasting my time of course. and stuff that I don't know. Of course, like, I love that. Know. I love that for you, and especially at this young age, you know, I'm definitely way older than you are. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I look back when I was younger and mm. I wish I had this conviction. Yeah. I wish I never wasted my time on, know. you know, certain people or certain things that yeah. didn't, weren't bringing me any value. So for you to have this um, kind of resolve and... Yes. Um, just know how of how you want to run your own life. I think yes. it's, 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 it's a gift, actually. Yeah. It's a gift. Very, very. It's a You're very gifted. Gift. Yes. So the relationship with singing, you must have started singing at a very young age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time. I started singing when I was <laughs> like three. I remember my mom always tell, tell me the story how um, our national anthem is really, really long. I think it may be like eight minutes. <gasps> eight? Am I? No, I'm not sure. Not sure. But it's long. Yeah, it's We're really gonna long. We're going to check it out. It's really long. It's really long. For a kid who's like three, four years old, I was singing the whole thing. And then my mom was just shocked all the time. And also my mom was a, a musician. Mm-hmm. She's a musician as well. She was. She used to sing in a traditional um, band called mm-hmm. Injeri. It's a very well-known band there. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where I get, that's where I get, the voice and the love of music, yeah. So mom must be proud of you. Yo, she's my best friend. Yeah. She's my best friend. She's the most understanding per- person I know. Because, see, as an artist, you we live a crazy life. Some might not understand. But my mom, she's always there. Like, she gets me every time. Mm. She's, she doesn't pressure me. Like, you know, I, I can... Spent like two days without talking to anyone at home. And then she just sent me a text. She's like, I hope you're doing good. I know you're going through a lot. <laughs> Keep your head up. Do your thing. You're a superstar. And when I read that, I feel so lucky, you know, because most of the artists don't have supportive parents like mm, mine. Yeah, That's amazing. And yeah. that's, that, that's your dad too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big time, big time. My dad that's as well. Dope. My dad as well, yeah. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Um, I mean, what's the situation like in Rwanda, like, or in Kigali? What's your day like? Do you have a lot of people, you know, wanting autographs or mm. pictures? Like, can you walk down the street? Um, I feel like uh, it goes with the personality of uh, yourself as a person. Um, I have a lot of fans there. Um very crazy crowd and I just I just feel like I don't have my privacy anymore mm. that's why I can't even want to do to go for a walk I'll need to be wearing a mask of course a ski mask you know but yeah I mean that's the life that's do you do you kind of wear masks and some people still recognize you yes that's crazy they do they do because my voice <laughs> My voice, even when uh, sometimes my fans, like, they call me and then I just speak up. I'm like, no, it's not her. It's like, I know her voice. I know her voice. Wait, they get your phone number and call you. Can you imagine? <laughs> I was going to ask what's the craziest thing a fan has done. I guess that's one of the craziest. Yeah, they call me. They even insult me, man. It's crazy. They do like, what? They insult me. Why? I don't know. Uh, maybe they feel, I don't, I don't even know. They in, they called and insult you yeah, on like, the phone. Like I don't I don't want to say in a bad way, but I understand them. So they they can call me and I don't pick up. And then they start 
text me like, ah, why are you new picking up, you know? Oh my Start God, your fans are aggressive. Yeah. They come and they want to talk know, to you on phone. You know, fans can be fans can be aggressive. Mm. Yeah, just have to find a way to navigate it. And 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 how yeah. how do you feel you're coping with the whole issue um, of you know self love, mm -hmm. especially in light of your first EP, how you yeah. came out, and you said part of the inspiration to even have a nude cover was the fact that yeah. you were being body shamed before. So. Yeah, yeah. There must have been a lot of time, you know, to reflect and yes. work, personal work to be done. What, what do you, what, what's your, you know, what's your take on, you know, this issue? As you said, on when I released Love and Lust, that was the hardest time because everything was going crazy around in the country. I was the main topic. The family was affected. My dad could get texts and then be like, your, your daughter, this and this and this, you know. But... That was the time when I really became stronger because I was like, if I overcome this, I'm never going down again. And um, I prioritized my mental health very much on a point where I feel like um, if I need a break in music, I can take it. No pressure. I don't feel pressure at all. Mm -hmm. Even if it comes, I just get away from the, from the city maybe and just go somewhere, take my time, do my music, play guitar, makes me relax, and then I come back again, like, I'm here to fight again. Yeah. So you all made you stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's time. dope. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. What's your, what's your um, approach to writing music? Mostly I uh, start with uh, melodies. Mm -hmm. Melodies with words without point, like saying nothing at all just melodies after i get melodies i end up in the melodies i end up punching like um there's a word that's there that i go and like build up the zero whole song. in on the word yeah. and then yeah because i just go and just put everything out mm -hmm. and what comes i can start from there and mm. I'm like yeah let me write about this because if i if i sang about this out of nowhere, like just improvisation, then it can be something good. Mm -hmm. So mostly it'd be like that. But also, um, I love writing my friends' stories, love stories, stuff. Yeah. Definitely. A lot of your songs are about love. And yeah. uh, when you look back, I mean, you know, you've done not a lot, but some. Mm -hmm. Good number of collabs. Yes. Any favorite or even any favorite like producers who you've worked with and they really understood your favorite collaborations that you did with other artists? Um, I'm going to say Rush. Big shout out to him. He's a, he's a good producer. He's the one who, I think I'm going to call it my first hit. He made my first hit and... He was new in the game. He, like, he was his first song out. Wow. And it was a smash. Wow, wow. Yeah, he produced Away. I'm with Junaki Zigenza. Mm -hmm. Shout out to him as well. Um, so, yeah, that, he's, he's the only pro producer that I feel very, 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 very like, mm. comfortable with. So, actually, I think <laughs> you did work with Rush yeah. um, sometime last year, around September, when you released three singles at yeah, the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, the triple release, yeah. Yes. Yeah. He, 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 he produced two, two tracks on it. He produced... Uh, Best in Me and Need You. Mm. Yeah. He's a dope producer. He gets He's it. really good. He's really but good. But I think no matter the case, I still get um, very consistent kind of aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Our Ways on Ways aesthetic. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because yeah, even when you're so, with songs with the Umoja sounds, like it's very aerial because they obviously mm -hmm. they collaborate with other artists. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. what you've done with them is very unique to you. Yes. So yes. I think that's a, a, a great thing you have that mm -hmm. there's a stamp of Ways on Ways. Yes. <laughs> Tell me about collaborating with Umoja sounds. Um, How did this come together? It was it was it was it was a nice ex it was a nice experience. Um they came to Rwanda they reached out. I was like, "This is a nice opportunity because mm -hmm. uh, I really I want to I want to go global as anyone as any artist." And uh, yeah, they reached out. Very good guys, humble, with a great sound. Really loved the way we worked. You see, when you in when we're in studio, normally you want perfection. I want perfection personally. I can take millions and millions of takes. Like I want it to be perfect. 
But the 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 idea with Umoja Sound was to just express yourself. We did only one take, every song. What? Yes. How did you allow yourself to do one take? Um, it was it was a challenge. It was a challenge, but I got to embrace the idea. I was like, mm. why not? Why not? And when I listened to how it came out, it's really beautiful. I feel like I loved I loved the whole experience. Mm. Yes. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. Okay, we're about to wrap the interview, but before that, yes. I just want to ask you, when you think of your early or inspirations in yes. the music industry mm. or entertainment industry, and especially women. Who are these women who come to your mind? First of all, um, the first person I see is Kamariza. Mm -hmm. She's one of the uh, biggest artists in our, in our country. May her soul rest in peace. She really, really, really inspired me. The way she dressed up, literally, like me. I don't know where I didn't grow up like looking at her and be like, I wanna be like her. I just discovered her through my mom, through her songs. And I just got to, because they didn't do videos back then, I got to just love her like that. Mm -hmm. And when I saw pictures of how she could pull up at the performance, I even loved her more and more. So she's my first, 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 first female artist that I look to. Um, I love Tio Savage so much, so much, so much. And um, who else? I love Miss Jojo. She also is an artist. She was an artist. She retired now. She's in retirement. And um, my, 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 who else? And my mother. Yeah. I feel like those are the ladies that I look up to. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. You're getting into a very interesting period in your life, in yeah, your career, yeah. you know, planning on releasing your debut album. I think all this time we thought we knew you, but we're about to know you in a different way. Yes. Is there anything you can share with us in regards to your debut album? I know you've been working on it for quite some time. Yes. Could have been around a year or more. What can you tell us about this album? Um, about the album. And uh, when is it going to drop? Um, <laughs> I'm not even sure, but it's coming very, very, very soon. 2024, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic, big time, big time. fantastic. This year, this year. Um, so about the album, it's... I wanted to do something um, very intimate, mm -hmm. uh, as I love to do it. And um, I feel like I went really, really, really smooth with the beats it's um it's not it's not the tempo is not up up mm -hmm. we have we have ballads um i have um r and soul i have uh afro beats it's it's a it's a very big pack of uh beautiful songs mm -hmm. i have also um i'm working with an amazing artist from our country kibombi king uh, Angel Mutoni. I have Ooh, also Mutoni is fire. Yeah, you heard of her? Yes. She's bad. She's bad. She's really bad. Shout out to her. Shout out to her. Uh, she's I bad. Have... I think she did a song with um. Ooh, Kivumbi. What's his Kivumbi? name? Not Kivumbi. Mutoni. She was rapping in somebody's EP most recently. Oh, she has an EP out called for now. No, no, she was mm. rapping in somebody's. Oh, is it? it was it in a project of Mike Kahira? Or who was rapping in that project? Is it Mike? Maybe it's Mike because they're very close. I think yeah, so. Maybe she, it's Mike. Yeah. Angel Kivumbi also have um, one of the. She's the biggest female artist. Uh, no less, I don't Ooh, know, you know her. She's big here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No less, I have um, harmonized, Ooh. tease it. Yeah, it's really going to be amazing. I can't wait for you guys to listen to it. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you Congratulations. so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anything you want to share with your fans, you know, with your country people, yeah. with the East Africans and everyone listening and watching yes. in regards to Ariel, the plan for 2024, and just basically, you know, good vibes? Yes, yes, yes. Um, the first thing I have to say uh, is to thank each and everyone, uh, my people from Rwanda, East Africa, and 
anywhere that you are. And if you support me, I really want to say thank you. Ever since I started, the journey was not easy. I was still pushing, and I promise to not give up because uh, mostly uh, in our country, we have a uh, few female artists, mm -hmm. and I really fight to stay in the game. That's like one of the things I want to focus on. And you're doing a really good job at that. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. So I found the song. It's based is in uh, my Kayura's uh -huh. album. Yeah, because yes. I'm like, I know, I know this. Yes, yes, I'm yes. Like, yes. I know Mutoni. Yeah, Angel. It's She's... a dope project, this one. Yeah. I almost interviewed Mike, but um, mm -hmm. he was in Kenya, then he left. Yeah. So I hope to see him or meet him or come to Rwanda and meet you all. Um, are there any dope Rwandese artists you want to put us through to? Like, yeah, just yeah. black? Yeah. Who should we check out? We have Alin Sano. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know her. We have Alin Sano, Angel. Angel, we have, yeah. Um, Linda Montez. We have Giza. We have... Yo, we we actually have a big number now. The list is artists. endless. Yeah, yeah. It's, it goes on and on. And it's really beautiful the way women are really taking over there. Yeah. That's amazing. I think that's a really great note where we're ending the show today. I want to thank you so much, Ariel Ways, for coming to VAP Access. Thank you so much Everybody for listening, watching. That was Ariel Ways from Rwanda, an amazing artist, singer, performer, and um, creative. Please follow her on all her social media channels. Follow Aniko TV and VAP Access you know, on all the social media channels. So thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you so much. It's been thank amazing. amazing. Cheers. VIP Access Season 4 is proudly supported by the Australian High Commission.